He couldn't have done more. This afternoon, outside public toilets in a bus station, Benjamin Netanyahu made sure he was heard as he went in search of every last vote he could find. His opponent, former General Benny Gantz, sought to emulate his rival on the beach in Tel Aviv. He may be boring by comparison, but he's not Netanyahu, and that's been enough to make him a serious contender. Exit polls show the parties led by both men either tied or with Mr. Gantz having a slight advantage. But it's far from clear if either of them will be able to form a government. And as coalition negotiations begin, Likud will have to decide if Israel's longest serving prime minister is now an asset or a liability. Mr. Netanyahu and his wife Sarah set an example by voting early here in Jerusalem. He called on all Israeli citizens to do the same, but that appeal was at odds with his campaign, which focused on intimidating this country's Arabs to prevent them from casting their ballots. In response, the leader of the Israeli Arab parties encouraged his community to turn out in large numbers. The steady integration of Arabs into the Israeli economy has made a majority want their politicians to stop carping from the sidelines and to get involved shaping the country, a change reflected by the Arab voters we spoke to. And I hope uh, every Arabic person to vote this day, because it's a big day and important for us. If you boycott the elections, you actually give your vote to the prejudiced party. And this is a very, very, very bad for us. The signs are that the Arab bloc have done well, picking up seats that Mr. Netanyahu badly needed. In all the exit polls released tonight, the number separating the two largest parties is too small to read too much into those figures. But having said that, of the two men vying to lead this country, Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Gantz, it's safe to say Mr. Gantz will sleep better tonight. John Irvine, News at 10, Jerusalem.